What's going on guys, Bladezilla here, and today we're taking a look at this super, super cool knife from Tactile. Um, let's get this to focus first and foremost, but uh, this is the one we're going to be taking a look at today. Tons to talk about. I don't know how in detail I'm going to go, but uh, we've got a knife here that is hitting well above its weight class and made in the U.S., and it's ticking all the boxes from my perspective of kind of what a really high quality made in the U.S., knife should kind of be from materials to craftsmanship to design. Um, really excited to talk about that today. Um, as a reminder, please visit my website, bladezilla.ca, where a lot of the knives featured on this YouTube channel are available for sale in Canada. So pretty cool. Visit the site, just threw up a bunch of Americans, uh, mini ultimatums, super sick knife, obviously lots of sheer groffs, microtex, etc. But that is bladezilla.ca. CA for Canada. Now that that uh, is out of the way. Let's uh, let's take a look at what we came here for. Uh, I'm not a big fan of dragging on the advertisements. Uh, I'd rather talk knives than uh, silliness. So let's take a look at the Archer. Ooh. Um, if you know me, let's just put it in the middle of the frame there. If you guys know me, and you'll know, hey, you know what's what is my favorite type of knife? You know, what is it? Well, it's going to be titanium. It's going to be a frame lock. It's going to be all kinds of super cool design pattern cut into it. This one, they're calling it feathered tie. And uh, it's going to be plain Jane tie. You know, it doesn't have inlays, doesn't have anything. And if you look at my personal collection, it's very much duplicates of this knife, but not exactly this knife. Um, just because I like plain Jane titanium. I like texture, and uh, I don't like too busy. So, you know, if you're going to take this knife and jazz it right up to, like, super killer level, it might have, like, a, you know, a Zerk clip or something. Um, but that would be kind of it. Okay, super sick knife. Well, I don't even know where to start. I guess let's start on the blade. Uh, this is a Magna Cut, and I believe they're saying it is 63 to 64 uh, hardness rating which apparently is where Magna Cut needs to be. I know that early on that uh, some companies were doing some softer uh, heat treats, or lighter heat treats, whatever the terminology is. And um, 63 to 64 seems to be kind of the sweet spot, which is a little bit more than some other steels. And talking with a knife maker, actually a very, very uh, high level of heat involved to get it to that point too. Um, so pretty cool. We've got obviously this amazing looking kind of thumb flicker zone. I guess you could probably reverse flick that. I'm not going to try as my hand is literally wrapped around a tripod, but I imagine based on that, you get your thumb in there, flick that all over the place, flick it long and flick it hard. And then underneath as well, obviously you can get in there and do the same. But what really sets this apart for me is look at the micro milling inside that blade. Kind of matches the feathered pattern, just looks the part. And looks so incredibly good. Oh, gorgeous. Gorgeous. Um, the feathered pattern itself uh, reminds me a lot of uh, the Shiro Bio. Um, obviously, this is much more micro milled, but uh, let's grab my Bio a little light here. Um, I know these are two different leagues of knives, but just from a patterning perspective, remember how I said earlier my knives of my personal collection are very much. Plain Jane tie with a little twist. Well, that's why I have the the bi the bio light, and I think I have a bio dark too. Um, but let's take a look at this. Let me move that out of the way so the camera doesn't freak out. There we go. Um, beautiful, right? But you look at it and go. You can kind of see the the texturing on here, the kind of the bio, the spine pattern of the bio, just so good, so well done. One of my all-time favorite Shergoroffs, regardless. Uh, bio light, bio dark, doesn't matter. I just love the color of the bio and the, the design. But if we look at this, you can kind of see that vibe, right? You've got micro milled feathering pattern, but you can kind of see how it's kind of got that spine rolling down the middle. It is 3D milled and it actually is a bit of a concave feel to it on the bottom here and a bit more rounded up top. So it should fit the hand very nicely. The flipper positioning, let's take a look. It is ahead of center, so it should pop out nice and easy. 
We've got a nice big tactile logo on that backspacer, which goes about halfway the length of the knife, which looks real, real nice. Nice and smooth, runs on bearings. Still hasn't been broken in or anything in this one, so uh, obviously we'll get much smoother. We'll flip it around and take a look, so we obviously have more of the same on this side. So we've got that feathering pattern, which looks terrific, right inside the lock bar. Oh, gorgeous. Super thin, actually. Looking at this one, the, uh, the frame is super, super thin. And I thought I read somewhere that this guy is supposed to weigh in like almost five ounces like 4.9 or 4.8. I don't know how that's possible. It doesn't feel like it, but maybe it is. Uh, we'll find out at some point here. Uh, clip, super usable. I love how there's that little see-through spot there, which you can kind of see more of the milling on the handle through that. And it is a little bit different of a color, I believe, which matches the backspacer. Kind of looks like a darkened tie. Um, I'm assuming it's tie. But the main thing here, let's look at all those Torx bits, and they're all big. Probably T8 or T10s, like they're big, beefy Torx bits, which look, they look the part. No complaints there. Uh, no pocket clip, or not pocket clip, blah, blah, blah. No uh, lanyard hole. So if you want to attach something there, you might be SOL. Because uh, there's nothing to attach it to. Nice and centered as well, which is kind of what you'd expect. But uh, very tight tolerances on this knife as well. I just think that, you know, made in the U.S., like, these guys obviously got their start making pens. And, uh, actually, you know what? This is hilarious. I, uh, I use one of their pens every day. <laughs> and, uh, if you buy a knife from me, um, I always write a thank you card. Um, or I try to. If I run out of cards, that's a different story. But I always try to write a handwritten thank you card. And, uh, that's written with a tactile pen. Fun fact. So... That's uh, that's what I'm using. Just because it feels good, and you know what? You'd never see um, this little split in the pen right here. Look at this, how it pops up when you open it up. See that? That's how tight these tolerances are. It'll just disappear. Boop. See what I'm saying? How nuts though is that? And then obviously just the, the bolt pen is just so cool. And fidgety to play with while you're in uh, Microsoft Teams meetings, etc. So... Love these pens, and I think they're cheap. Like I would love to uh, to do more with Tactile, because they just make good stuff. Uh, I'd love to do their pens, love to do more of their knives, but uh, they've got some pretty good representation in Canada currently, and I don't know if they're looking for more people to sell their pens, but I wish I could sell their pens, because I like them so much, and I think they're like... I want to say these are like maybe 100 or 120 bucks US for like a made-in-US super killer titanium pen. And just done so well. So as I was saying, they got their start in pens and kind of quickly went into to knives here. And uh, they're banging it out of the park. Because this guy, I think, list is like 6 six fifty something like that, US. And um, tremendous value from the materials to the craftsmanship to the design. It's just an overall winner, in, in my opinion. But we'll see how it, does, well, how it holds up in terms of durability. That's a whole different uh, ball game. Um, back to... Back on track, I know I like to go off track, that's like the story of my life. Um, what are we looking at here? So we do have a metal lock bar insert as well and an over travel stop on the lock bar, which is cool. Held in place by two different Torx bits, which is cool. And hopefully I can kind of show you where that is inside here. It's just hiding right in there. So, uh, you know, as you, as you use it, you can hopefully replace that over time, but I don't think I've ever seen anyone replace that lock bar insert. Pretty rare. Um, it's more to prevent stiction between the materials, in this case titanium and uh, MagnaCut. Um, I always like to show this on my Shiro's. You know that. What are we looking at here, guys? What are we looking at? That lock bar is elevated. A very key feature to me and something I look for, and it doesn't matter what knife. It's just, I don't know why. Either elevate the lock bar or do a cutout. And uh, on this side, so you just find it so much easier. Um, I think that looks tremendous, and I think the patterning itself is done on the inside of that lock bar too, and that is just a nice little touch. Uh, whether they line up, I don't know, but I think that uh, they didn't have to do that. They could have left that raw. That's what she said. And uh, it just looks real nice overall. Um, to me, this pivot here, you know, it looks like more of a cap. You know, and if you're going to do a cap on top of a pivot, 
I would rather you kind of fill that whole spot up. That would kind of be my only beef with this. And because it just looks a little empty and things are going to get in there. Um, you know, the cap could have filled that nicely, but it is what it is. Um, maybe that's just me being picky. But on the other side, you know, it uh, kind of fills up. Looks, looks the part, certainly. On the inside of here, I'm assuming we've got lots of skeletonization. If I can find my little light. Okay, on the inside here, there we go. We can see all that nice material that's taken out of there, hopefully. Is it a floating backspacer? It doesn't look to be. But you can get a sign of kind of the amount of material taken out on the inside of this, which is done really, really well. So definitely, definitely done well. Let's see the balance. Is it a bit handle heavy or it feels a little handle heavy? I'm going to go with that because I don't want to drop it. And let's get a weight. And so, geez, I haven't even done measurements on this. What am I doing with my life today? Oh boy, just running in circles, I swear to you guys, eh? Okay, so let's get a weight on this. And I uh, appreciate you bearing with me here. Zero that. So, like I said, it's apparently 4.9 or something, I thought. Four and a half. Is that what I'm seeing there? Let's just make sure the camera can pick that up. 4.6, 4.5, somewhere in that conversation, which I'm kind of surprised at, to be honest. Like, it doesn't feel that heavy. Um, it doesn't feel that heavy, and it's a three inch blade, three and a half inch. So yeah, I'm kind of surprised that it's uh, 4.6, 4.5 ounces. It doesn't feel that heavy. Um, considering it's three and a half inch blade, I thought I saw. Three, yeah, three and a half inch to the center of the choil. Overall, it's about eight inches, maybe a hair over eight and an eighth. And then the handle length of four and a half to four and five eighths, somewhere in there. Um, it's not a huge knife, but I guess it packs a bit of a punch. Um, and I guess the main way to look at it is the handle profile is actually quite tall. And, you know, if I grab my neon here, that would be a pretty good... I'll grab a couple knives. Uh, we'll, we'll do the neon after, but small Sabenza, large Sabenza. Everybody knows those size. So there's your small, right? That's a better angle to show the size of the scalability. It's so quite a bit smaller in the depth of the handle. But overall, not a huge amount. Um, there's our large Sabenza, right? About the same size, maybe a little bit longer as the large Seb. But there you go. Should give you a good indicator, right? Everybody loves Sabenzas. So, good size, uh, but the handle's, the handle's fairly large. Uh, sort of fa fairly tall, which is fine. And in terms of the Shiro stuff, well, we've got our Quantums, right? Everyone loves Quantums, and I'll grab that Neon and throw that down on the bottom as well. If I can find it, there's just too many of them. Maybe a Stellar would be good as well. Let's grab that. And I can't even find my Neon. I don't know where it went. Okay. There's a Stellar. A Stellar's actually a pretty good comparison on this. Um, just overall size-wise, I'd say. There you go, and I'll move that one down. I get too excited when it's time to show different knife comparisons. Stellar's a good size comparison. That's real close, eh? So, once again, tie, a plain Jane tie, that's hilarious. Um, this guy's obviously M390, but it's a little bit more milling, obviously, but uh, in terms of the blade length, we're right in the same ballpark. Handle height, very similar. A little more belly to this one, a little more curvature. But you can see a nice, if you look at the profile, there's no split for your fingers, so it's going to fit a lot of different hand profiles, which I'll show here in a second. But just overall, just simple. Like, nothing too crazy. Now, my experience with my tactile rock wall is the bearings, once they broke in, it was very drop shutty. So this currently feels pretty controlled, but I imagine that will break in and become a little more drop shutty. But in hand... You know, you're locked in, you're, you're, you're dropped right into it. I've got an extra large hand, uh, size XL, and I've got just about a quarter finger left hanging off here. So it fits me, good size, really thin knife is kind of what I'd be 
talking about more than anything on this knife. It's just everything about it is very thin. Um, you know, uh, if you looked at the handle this size, you'd probably think it's a much thicker knife, but it's much taller and thinner than you'd kind of think. Like, the blade is, I'd say, half of the overall profile of the knife, which is kind of cool. Maybe a third. I don't know what I'm saying. But uh, anyway, I, I just wanted to kind of put that video together because I've been waiting to, f to see one of these uh, for quite a while and I, uh, I finally decided to pull the trigger and grab a few of these for the site and put them up. And, um, you know, I, I don't know the demand for, for tactile. They still are super, super uh, attractive in Canada. I know they used to be uh, very, very tough to kind of get your hands on. Um, but they were always just really good value with excellent materials, good designs, and made in the U.S. And that's, to me, like a complete winning formula all, all the way around. And no one's ever really had any big problems with tactile, as far as I know. Um, another thing that this was pretty cool with as well is it came with a big zippered pouch. Um, which I'll show here. Uh, that must be new for them, because I don't think my other one came with that. So they're kind of stepping up their carry game as well with these big pouches. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful pouch. And I don't know about you, but I'll never complain about a nice big pouch um, for your knife, guys. For your knife. Come on, get your, get your mind out of the gutter. Get your mind out of the grindstone. All right. I will leave you there. I've probably blabbed on for too much time, as always. Um, I could do this for an hour and time would just go like that. So um, I better just cap it here. All right. Well, that is the tactile archer. And I know there's a number of different configurations I didn't mention that they're doing. So if there's one you want to look at, uh, you know, hit me up. But there's lots of different options on these out there. Super sick tactile flipper, full tie, magna cut, made in US, win win, all the way around, and plain Jane to boot. So. That's it. All right, guys. Thanks for stopping by and checking it out. Visit bladezilla.ca. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok. Uh, I made a Facebook page as well. Feel free to just search Bladezilla. I made a Facebook page, which I just kind of uh, will copy-paste the YouTube videos to. And, um, yeah, that's it, guys. Have yourself a great week. See ya. Peace.